Good day, everyone. My name is Heather Ford with Centene Corporation's training and education team. I'm delighted to bring you this timely training on talking to your children about coronavirus 19. We know that this virus is a dynamic and facts and policies and best practices associated with are ever changing, sometimes daily, even hourly. This can be a challenging and scary time for families and children. And our goal with this training is to provide those practical strategies to support the needs of those we serve and you and your family as well. We would like to give a disclaimer that at, at any time during this training, this information is troubling or overwhelming. Just take a moment, we ask for yourself, as these are challenging and distressing times for many, as many of us have experienced COVID-19 on many different levels with friends or families that could have been impacted. So without further ado, let's get started with our training on talking to children about coronavirus. Some of our objectives that we're going to cover today are just knowing the high level facts of COVID-19 and some of those behaviors and practices that we need to do to stay healthy as well. We're going to examine those techniques and practices in, in more detail and figure out ways to discuss and be supportive um, during this time. We're also going to explore ways to manage our stress and anxiety. And we even have packaged within this training a rich amount of resources for you to access. I'd like for you all to make sure that you note your references as well. The CDC is where a lot of the resources are pulled from um, where this training was derived. So as promised, here's our overview of COVID-19. So what is COVID? We know about the origin of COVID as put forward by the CDC. We know that coronavirus is a large set of families of viruses that cause illnesses ranging from what the common cold and even more severe diseases such as the Middle East respiratory system or MERS as we've heard it and severe acute respiratory syndrome. Coronavirus 19 is a new strain that was discovered in 2019 and has not been previously defined. So some other additional info that we know about the virus, how it spreads. We do know, unfortunately, there is no vaccine. There's a lot of information in the news about different vaccines or different cures um, that um, they are trying to come up with um, at this time. But the best way to prevent the illness is to avoid being exposed to the virus. A lot of us are on shelter in place at this time and different um, states are opening up, but we need to follow those precautions to not be exposed to the virus. It is thought to spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close proximity with one another about six feet. And you might have noticed this while you do go out and about in the community that this is put with tape on the ground um, of standing six feet away and as well as precautions taken at the cash register as well for those that are uh, working to help service in the community at grocery stores, for example with the plexiglass. Through respiratory droplets as well, uh, they're produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. So for more details uh, specifically about COVID-19, you can find out what the acronym means, the, how it was derived, um, I encourage you to visit the WHO's website on these topics regarding Corona. So some of the ways or uh, tips for staying healthy um, we'd like to review are those in fact that um, assist us on our day-to-day -day measures of staying healthy and minimizing our risk of contracting the virus. We need to get a lot of rest. We need to be our best selves and, and get rest. Additionally, we wanna keep surfaces clean. We wanna also remind our children to stay away from people when we do go out in the community. 
they're coughing or sneezing, or that could be possibly sick. We definitely want to avoid that. And we want to remind our children to sneeze or cough into a tissue or into their elbow. And then if they're using a tissue, to definitely throw it into the trash. Social distancing that we just touched on is very important to keep that physical distance in order to minimize the spread. We are now um, requested to wear masks, covering your face with a mask in order to minimize the spread because we have to act as if what, that we may carry the virus because there may not be any symptoms prevalent to us um, as well. It's very important that we're washing our hands as often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. There are a lot of different um, applications out there that assist us. Uh, as far as helping our children, the, taking the best practices and washing their hands. Um, we have one that's called uh, Teaching Mama within our resources. I know Sesame Street has come out with uh, different um, methods as well, with different songs. Um, our early childhood education teachers have also put out uh, things out. So I encourage you, whatever may suit you for your children to get this underway. This is a great method to often wash our hands and for that length of time of 20 seconds. So remember, it's especially important when you're coughing, you're sneezing, you're going to the bathroom and before eating and definitely when you're preparing food. And also using hand sanitizer if you don't have soap available with at least 60% alcohol and covering all surfaces of your hands and rubbing them together until they are dry. And we want to avoid touching our eyes, our nose and mouth with unwashed hands. So this information is definitely important while we are navigating to get back into the community little by little and best practices to put in place. So with all this information in the media about safety practices and evidence of our society doing the same, you may be starting to see an impact in these behaviors, especially in our children. So I want you to think about what are some of the disruptions to your daily life that this virus has caused? Some of the ones that we could share are maybe seeing people in masks. This is something that we hadn't done before. We were, we're now making our own masks, figuring out different ways um, and creative ways to make this happen for our children so they can understand ways of protecting ourselves. Um, we don't have school. Schools are closed, um, many of them for the rest of the school year, or for those that are opening in specific states, they have certain precautions they put in place as well. A parent, possibly, we could be without a job or reduced hours. This is challenging. We're not seeing our loved ones. I know some of the children in care, uh, some of our families that have been part of this training um, have stated that the children are concerned of their birth families and not being able to have that visitation or contact with them. So there's a lot of ways that this has been impacted. And it's important that we take these tips for staying healthy in place. Some of the common known reactions um, that are happening, we've talked about the disruptions in our children's daily lives. Um, the NCTSN, which is another one of our resources, have highlighted some of those common known reactions in children that are struggling with what they are seeing and hearing about the virus. Are there any other reactions that you might have witnessed that are not noted here on the slide? We do see those intrusive images, nervousness or jumpiness, difficulty concentrating, or just taking in information. Your child may run away and just not want to hear that information. Just feeling hopeless and disconnected. Our teens that were due to graduate, they may just feel disconnected and just forget about it. I don't even want to worry about prom or grad night or any of that. My whole senior year has just not been worth anything. And just not being able to have a, a great worldview anymore, kind of that vicarious trauma that it's just nothing's going to be good anymore. Like the coronavirus has just damaged everything. 
So tap into that resource that you see at the bottom of this slide from NCTSN for additional resources and ways of helping and coping with that. Now shifting into some of the body of this presentation and having these healthy conversations with our children, it's important that we are accessible and letting our kids know that we're doing everything that we can as a family, as a caregiver, as a kinship provider to assist them. An important way to offer comfort is to have positive and healthy conversations with the children. Many of us can worry that talking to young children will lead to increased worries and anxieties. Actually, the opposite is, is the case. Bringing those difficult topics into the conversation to bring them forward can help reduce those worries as well in all ages. Find a quiet, comfortable place to talk. You know that place in your home or that quiet place that you might have developed during this time, wherever it may be, but take a breath and bring it up. Some things that you may be able to say for a suggestion, you might say something like this. There's been a lot of talk about coronavirus. Kind of tell me what you know about it or tell me what you've heard about it. A special that came on recently was a CNN broadcast Sesame Street and had different questions from children of all ages that were concerned about and what they've heard. When can I see my friends? Some folks can go outside, but I can't. Um, so all of these questions come up. So take that time to talk to them. For our tweens or our teens, you might consider something like this. Tell me what your friends are saying about coronavirus. What have you seen about this online? Because they have access to what? Twitter, Instagram, different blogs, YouTube videos. So starting this conversation allows you to listen to what your child or teen knows and gives you the place to begin what? A conversation that just continues because it's an ongoing conversation, ongoing education as we, we get to know more and more each day and what precautions and how it's developing. NCTSN also gives another example of the resource that you can grab. Once you go through these um, resources, you can uncover many as you go. So they say, while it is possible for someone in our family to get the virus, we are doing everything we know how to, how to do and keep our family healthy. We are washing our hands well, we cover our noses and mouths when we sneeze, and when we are staying at home to prevent us from getting the virus. It's not always fun, but we do it to keep ourselves and everyone else healthy. As always, we will also care for you if you get sick. That reassurance is, is, is key. And we always have to remain calm while we're doing this because our children are watching us and how we react. Avoid that language that might blame others and lead to stigma. We want to avoid that type of interaction and that language. And we want to provide information that is as best as we can that's honest and accurate. There's all kind of news briefings and, and news that's just going on constantly. Be careful of that. And we want to ongoing to teach our children every day actions to reduce the spread of these germs. So we want to shift our attention now to how we're going to manage this anxiety and stress. As everyone continues to talk about the virus, our children may start to worry about themselves, their families, as well as friends getting sick. As parents, caregivers, school staff, and other trusted adults, we play an important part in helping children make sense of what they hear and have the ability to what? Calm their fears as well. So let's look at some of these practical ways that we can address anxiety and stress. So we want to, first, we gotta take care of our body. We hear that quite a bit. This is promoted across many websites. I'll reference NCTSN again. Um, we want to try to eat healthy, as well balanced as possible. Exercise, not necessarily rigorously, 
but take time away if you're working from home, homeschooling, we'll have walks, uh, we will go for bike rides, play basketball, different things to exercise to keep your body going as well as what we mentioned earlier, getting plenty of sleep and rest. So our body has somewhere to pull from other than just mere exhaustion. Um, and as well as we want to avoid that alcohol, smoking, and other drugs. Connect with others. Those folks that when you're doing your day-to-day -day routine, you have difficulty getting in contact with. Share concerns about how you're feeling with a friend or family member. Maintain those relationships, building that strong support system. Within our resources, there is an online support group to reference um, that I'd like to bring forward, as well as uh, resources for those uh, folks that could be engaging in substance abuse, as we want to avoid that and eliminate that as much as possible. Taking breaks is key. We need time to what? Unwind and remind ourselves of those things that are very positive that we can access. So we wanna take our deep breaths, try to do those activities that we usually enjoy or that we can pick up now. There's different hobbies that many of us have allowed to fall to the wayside just because of time. This may be a, another opportunity for it to engage children in those activities that you might have seen on Pinterest or crafts that you might have ordered that might just be in the closet or different games that you can enjoy as a family. This is a perfect time to, be, um, to unwind. Stay informed. When you feel that you're missing information, you may become more stressed or nervous. So you can watch or listen or read the news for updates, but I, I encourage you to limit yourself to this and get what you need and become educated but be aware that there may be rumors during this crisis, especially on social media, and especially what our kids can be hearing, even more reason to check in on them. Verify these resources, and we're gonna provide some here at the end of the training to be reliable information. And we know we're getting a lot of that from our government and our authorities as well, but we've attached those as well, some of these resources, I'm at the end of this slide deck. Avoid too much exposure. Again, take those breaks from watching and reading and listening and uh, listening to podcasts and different blogs. It can be upsetting to not only our children, but ourselves to see this repeatedly images over and over. Try to do these activities that you know your children enjoy um, and return to somewhat of your new normal life as much as possible and check in. You just check in between breaks on those news broadcasting. So it's important that you reestablish this routine. Many of our parents and all of you have taken the time now to establish a homeschooling routine. And if you think we don't wanna forget about our kiddos, uh, children that may have um, a learning disability or autistic, we have a resource in there for um, these children that could be particularly helpful because as parents, you did a great job of establishing a routine um, to keep them consistent and stable and focused and structured. Well, now your home routine has been disrupted and you've had to reestablish that. And these fears and anxiety um, will come to the surface if we're not there to support them through that. So there's a resource. Um, Within there, there's actually two for autistic children um, that you might find useful to utilize. So there are many things you can do to support your child in and managing this anxiety and stress. So just take, your, take the time and, and try to keep your regular routines. We know schools are closed, but creating a schedule for learning activities and relaxing and fun activities, this will be great. You're the role model. They're watching and listening to you. Any other suggestions that you may have would be awesome because you are the ones that are working and engaging and being there as a forefront. So think about those outside of what you see on this slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to move now 
back to the slide of relaxation ideas for you and your children. These are just a few more activities that foster relaxation in our children. One of my favorite ones is the calming corner. My daughter has taken um, the opportunity now, she's a big Pinterest fan, and she has taken the opportunity to uh, reconstruct her, her closet into this calming corner. She's put up lights, kind of those lights that you can get um, during um, college opening time to put around the room. She has pillows and soft blankets and different readings and um, her journal book and coloring that she enjoys doing. This is a great place to create. Um, if you don't have a closet, it may just, again, be a corner um, that a child creates with whatever brings them ease and whatever may bring you at ease. This is similar to the Zen zone or safe space for you as well. There are muscle tension and relaxation strategies that you can use. I, we have included that um, at the end um, for these four resources as well. There's different apps or different um, meditation, mindfulness. Um, and you can never go wrong with a positive me or journaling as well. Positive me diary can be created for, for children three to five. And all things about me where they color. Um, some of this stuff can, uh, you can look up. Um, for it to personalize it as well. Journals are an awesome way to kind of get up and get that out. Um, that's all that's processing in your mind. So these are just a few um, additional um, things that we would like to highlight that you can offer to foster this relaxation and soothing within our children. So we do want to now move into our self-care techniques. Um, and we've discussed so far, the education component of COVID, supportive co components for your family and your children. Now we're gonna shift to these self-care techniques and incorporating these routines during your day-to-day -day practice. And then as promised, we're gonna wrap up with those resources that we can access and consider utilizing in our day-to-day -day practices. So, this is a great, I just really enjoy this self-care uh, strategy. The ABCs of self-care, awareness, balance, and keeping those connections. We touched on that supportiveness before. And don't forget that uh, resource online for those group supports that you can access. So right now, your family and children and colleagues, you, you may be experiencing all kinds of different reactions to what's occurring because we all respond to things differently. So no matter what level of impact COVID is having on our stress levels, you can't go wrong with self-care. It's just always a great thing to do. There are several ways you can find balance and be aware of your needs and make connections. So use these ABCs and keep it in your mind even after this training of self-care to decide which strategies work best for you and you can put in place for you and your loved ones. And again, I want you to reference that NCTSN resource for this as well. So the first step is to seek awareness. You have to be aware. This requires you to slow down, be mindful, and focus inwardly to determine how you are feeling and what your stress level is. What types of thoughts are going through your mind, and whether or not your behaviors and your actions are consistent with the who you want to be. Kind of look out for these common signs of distress, okay? Feelings of numbness and disbelief and anxiety or fear. Look for that in your children. They may have changes in their appetite, their energy, or just activity level. Because remember, our routines have changed and we've changed and they've had to adapt to a lot of change. Even with the assignments, you may have, try to have them on a structured schedule and not able to concentrate or just having difficulty falling asleep, even having nightmares or just thoughts and images where they weren't having that before. And physically reacting, 
having stomach aches and headaches and body pains and skin rashes, their eczema may be flaring up and you're like, why is this happening? Your body keeps a score of, of trauma like this. And it be, may be worsening of chronic health problems. You may not only see that in some of our children that may be medically fragile and have other health concerns, but also in yourself. You may see that in yourself. So that's why the self-care is important. Anger or short-tempered or just being irritated, right? And we mentioned earlier about the increased use of alcohol and smoking and other drugs. We want to watch for that um, for our tweens and teens that might be engaging in those behaviors, vaping and uh, smoking, and things that they weren't doing before, or this has increased. So we want to ensure that you're paying attention and being aware of these bullet points that we've mentioned. Are we feeling as if you're working harder, but accomplishing less? Something for us to think about as parents. Compassion stress breaks through those normal boundaries. Are we having a harder time because we're experiencing that secondary trauma and feeling just we're losing compassion for some people while we're becoming involved with so many others? Because we initially were concerned about our immediate family, but now we're extending that to others. We may have to assist others um, that we normally wouldn't care for just because of extenuating circumstances. So these are some things we want to be aware of when we're talking about awareness. So moving into that balance component, we want to keep that balance in our life and practice what? The self-care nurture ourselves and by putting activities in our schedule that are sources of what pleasure and a diversion for what's imminent now with COVID. So these are all areas of our life, including work, personal, family, life, rest, and leisure. You're going to be more productive when you've had the opportunities to rest and relax, right? So we can be our best selves. So being aware of when you are losing balance in your life gives you an opportunity to assist with that change, as well as gives you the opportunity to assist in putting those measures in place for your children. So practice relaxation exercises. We're gonna tap into those in just a minute here and use apps on your phone. Um, that will also assist you. These are av available via Android or iPhone and different meditation strategies and music that you can put in place. And using mindfulness to reduce our anxiety and reduce those thoughts and being overwhelmed or just consumed with just everything that's going on and with work and now the structures change. I have to work from home. I don't have a, a safe, a good space where I feel comfortable. But we want to try to maintain that balance and keep, keep this into play on a day-to-day -day basis. So in moving to balancing more, we're going to talk about balancing of your soul. So we want to ensure that we take an ongoing self-inventory. Again, being aware, being mindful. The body responds to feeling more relaxed and ease when you can tune into and reconnect to be calm, renew, and replenish you. It's easy to get up into the day, today, responsibilities of our lives, and just start going and just full speed ahead. But by taking the time, it empowers you to be mindful and be clear with the intent of focusing and minimizing the stress that's happening. Just ask yourself from time to time and ask your children. This can be your little thing that you say, have I taken my first two steps or, haven't or have I taken my steps to my A and my B? Am I C to take care of me? So let's move into those connections. So we want to talk out our stress. Remember we talked earlier in the training about being available, being accessible, ongoing with our children. So we can process those thoughts of what they're hearing and what they're reading and those reactions. They may be minimal, but it's important to tune into them as well. And also talk to those who you may be close with, a coworker, you know who those are, or if you need to at this time, a therapist who tell, 
telehealth or telemedicine. There may be someone at church, your pastor, um, or a church family members that are contacting you via phone or Zoom. Um, also supervisors or those connections or supportive connections that you have made. You all know those close people that you can access. So these connections are paramount during this time. And pets, if anyone, if any of you have a dog or a cat or even fish, those are just self-soothing because they are able to give you whatever affection and just and have an opportunity um, with no pressure. And so that is an actual, just that step, that kind of pet therapy. Um, and it just can reduce and reduce that blood pressure and that heart rate um, when you're interacting because that's just that warm desire to engage. So just these connections are just ways for you all to think about. And you may have other ways um, that you have provided this self-soothing. But remember these ABCs um, to be in tune to you all. So with that, we have our summary of what we've covered and then I'm going to shift into those resources um, that we mentioned earlier. So we've talked about those high level components of COVID-19 and also we've examined those healthy behavior techniques and practices that we wanna put in place. And we've discussed supportive ways to bring up and communicate COVID-19 with our children. And then finally, we did explore those ways, remember those ABCs, um, to manage stress and anxiety, taking time for ourselves as well. So I'm just so thankful that I've been able to share this information and spend some time here um, with all of you to discuss um, these important points at this time. So the following now are resources that we've designed for you to take with you and use as a guide to point you to the most current and updated information regarding the topics we've covered. Now it's important um, that you, when you're following the links, that, that you continue to follow those, those select ones that you follow, because often there's updates that the CDC or the WHO may be um, providing on an ongoing basis.